I have gotten so many feedbacks and questions from you guys ever since I posted a video about if it's worth it to go to coding bootcamp in 2024. And based on all these questions and all these comments that you guys gave me, in my opinions, I think that coding bootcamp was such a popular thing that everybody does. And I think it really peaks in 2017 to 2019. Now we are in 2024. I'm also a bootcamp grad and I would love to share my experience about attending a coding bootcamp. And I'm hoping that my experience would help you to make a decision. Now, before even sharing my own experience that I had from the bootcamp, I wanted to give you a little bit more context about my background. I wanted to tell you that I did not have a computer science degree. I was a finance undergrad student straight out from college. When I first moved to New York, I was lost. I was looking for that passion and I was looking for that job that would make me happy. I still remember vividly that I had this conversation with my Asian parents at the dinner table. Now I'm going to say this, do not have serious conversations with your parents at a dinner table because it got heated up like super quickly and sometimes you wish they didn't say it because everybody just forget about food and they all get so serious at the dinner table. So what happened is that was the time that I decided I wanted to tell my dad, hey dad, I've been thinking a lot about my career. I've been thinking a lot about getting into software engineering and I have no idea how, but I am going to quit my job and I want you to give me this amount of money to help me to go to school for three months so that I can get a job as a developer. Developer. Let me tell you, this is not a fun story to share with my Asian parents. They love the fact that I am going back to school, but the fact that I bought up this school isn't really a certificate, isn't really a traditional academia education. They got super scared. So they like basically stopped eating. <laughs> and that's how you know at an Asian household, how everything got heated up is your parents stop paying attention to food. Food, but let's talk about what's going on in your life. I said to my mom, I'm like, Ma, I have been thinking about this a lot. I am grateful that I'm a data analyst at this startup company in New York. I've been learning a lot. I love my coworkers. However, I want to pursue my passion. And I really wanted to get this going. I really wanted to become a developer. I really, really, really like front-end development. And I remember that my mom was just so confused. I remember that she was just confused with what front-end developer even means. And she's not really a tech-savvy person. So she has been trying to figure out all these informations that I've just given to her. Because in her head, she's thinking like, she's gonna be quitting her job, which provides her decent amount of salary to, to pay for rent. Instead, she wants to use that money and she wants more money to pay for an education that really could not justify at the moment if you can really find a job as a developer. So I, I get that why she's concerned. I think she almost choked on her own bowl of rice. <laughs> I remember she said, sweetie, are you sure? A training school, you think this is gonna give you the education that you needed? This does not sound like something that is worth a shot. The reason that I'm sharing this with you is because making a commitment to getting into coding bootcamp is a lot of money. And especially is a lot of time. It's a lot of commitment that you are taking on to. So I don't want you to make a decision that you're going to regret. I want you to make a decision that in the end you'll feel happy about just like me. I am so glad that my parents are so supportive and I am so glad that I took the limb to pursue something that I generally know that I would love. So let's talk about the coding bootcamp experience. This is my experience. Before I even got into the bootcamp, you have about at least five to 10 hours of studying on your own. They'll provide you a lot of information that you can learn to program. It's very basic beginner programming knowledge that you will grab on your own. After you learn all of that, they will then test you to make sure that you are a perfect student and you're ready to get onto this journey. And I remember that was like, 
a really, really, really easy path for me because I had some programming languages in the background from my previous job. So learning that wasn't that hard. And passing that interview was just breezy easy. It wasn't that hard either. However, once you get into the program, the hard work just started. Once you're in the program, it started to get very challenging. And the reason that I'm saying this is because you get assigned to an in-person immersive experience, which means you are in a class with 20 other people who are also in the same cohort. The cohort is about five days a week and it lasts from 9 a.m. in the morning to 5 p.m. And a lot of us actually ended up staying later till like sometimes 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. to just finish homework and work on our group project. And I think the most challenging of all of this is that the program actually tests you every three weeks of the knowledge that you gather. They're teaching you so much at a very short period of time. So if you have a very slow learning curve, it's gonna take you a while, a while. But if you learn really fast and you're really good at hands-on experience and learning things with working on projects, this might be a really good program for you because the fact that it allows you to build a lot of small projects with your cohort classmates. It also gives you a lot of tests that is heavily based on projects. The format is pretty simple. Every day you go to class and you'll have like maybe two lectures in total and you would be doing a lot of coding exercises based off what you learn in that lecture and there's gonna be TAs that are helping you with all these problems that you'll run into. And you also have people who you probably make friends with in class who are doing the same projects as you, so they can also help you out. So it's like a really good classroom experience that you get if you're doing this like in-person experience. However, I know that a lot of people are now doing online experiences and I can't really speak for that because my entire coding bootcamp experience is based off in-person in New York City. I do think that the online experience would be really good if they provide you mentors and they provide you assistance if you run into problems that you cannot resolve. At the end of the day, I think that it really depending on how you learn and gather knowledge and how you learn on your own as a individual. I think that people who are quick learners are gonna have way more advantage over people who has a slower learning curve. But at the end of the day, I still think that this coding bootcamp experience will help you to gather the information that you needed for becoming a developer. Looking back, I really did enjoy the program. I think at the time, that program was the best decisions that I've made to help me to get to my career goals. And at the same time, I also make a lot of lifelong friends at the bootcamp. And also because they're my friends, I get to expand it, my professional connections with all of them who are graduated from the bootcamp, who are ended up in the tech scene. Now, after graduation, there is a career support for the bootcamp. And this is very different from bootcamps to bootcamps. It really depending on which program that you enroll and what bootcamps that are offering for career services. I would highly encourage you to make sure that you understand what comes along after your graduation, like what kind of supports that they give you when you graduated. For hours, most of the support is from someone who's a career advisor who basically checks in with you every week to make sure that you're being consistent with applying for jobs. And if you have any issues running into like interviews and stuff, they would help you with the behavioral interviews. However, I do feel like there's some disadvantage of this bootcamp. I think that this bootcamp does not really provide enough of information for you to practice on your technical interviews. And I also don't think that they really teach you much about technical interviews. A lot of the technical interviews that I run or run into today is mostly based off heavily technical interviews. Unfortunately, 
the boot camp didn't really give me that leverage. So I ended up spending about three to six months to get really good at acing all the technical interviews to get the offers that I want. So I do feel like if you're looking for boot camps and you're asking for their graduation rates and job replacement rates, if they were gonna support you with teaching you how to tackle those technical interviews and how many free resources they'll help you to do that. Because now in 2024, there are so many technical interviews, like rounds and rounds and rounds of them. So you wanted to make sure that you're really good at giving interviews because at the end of the day, if you can't pass any of the technical interviews, no matter how much that the recruiter or the hiring manager likes you, they're not gonna give you an offer because you're not gonna be able to perform at the job. That's what they would think. So you wanna make sure that your technical interviews are perfect, especially in 2024. Speaking of in 2024, there might be so many junior developers are looking for junior developers positions. And it's not easy out there. There are so many layoffs. So there's gonna be really difficult for you to look for a junior role. The best bet that you can do is to get yourself some real world experience. And don't be too picky. Be more focusing on looking for jobs that provides you the greatest experience, provides you the best entry point into tech. Here are some of the things that I would like to suggest you to focus on when you are looking for a job after you graduated. Number one is you wanted to apply for jobs that are expanding your professional network. What that means is you wanted to keep applying. It's a numbers game. So you wanted to keep sending out resumes, applying online at the same time you wanted to expand your professional network so then you can get referrals from other people on LinkedIn or even you might get recruiters reach out or try to connect with as many recruiters as you can. Number two is, and this one is really important, is to practice on interviews like a lot without passing technical interviews. You will not get any offers. Let me repeat this you will not get any offers. So make sure to practice your technical interview and make sure that is your top priority. Number three, contribute to open source and encourage yourself to collaborate with others on the project. One of the underrated skills that people don't really talk about in tech is collaborations. A lot of times I feel like we're just trying to get the project finished on our own and we're not really encouraging people to like communicate and like make compromises and try to make sure that everybody's on the same page right so contributing to open source projects will allow you to make connections with real developers in real life also getting your real world experience on projects and different code bases if you really enjoy this video give me a thumbs up smash that like button and for the most part i do wanted to hear about your comments if you have your experience with the bootcamp and how was that experience or maybe if you're considering attending a coding bootcamp like what are the bootcamps that you're consider applying for I would love to hear any of that so make sure to leave a comments down below because I'll read all of them and also make sure to check out my video about how to stand out after you graduated from a coding bootcamp. I give you some advice from my past experience and I hope that would help you a little bit more on landing your first developer job.